Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor and I'm walking along the canal towpath. I'm off to do some spinning for my favourite species, which is of course the perch. And the great thing about this is you can travel light. I've got a bag over my shoulder, I've got my uh, net just tucked into there in case I catch a decent fish and I need to uh, land it. And I've got my rod made up, as you can see there, there's the reel, there's the rod already set up. All I need to do when I uh, start fishing just around the corner is to take off the rod band and uh, put the rod together and away I go. Brilliant isn't it? I do a lot of lugging gear around, carp fishing and uh, sessions that involve lots and lots of gear but it's nice sometimes just to travel light and that's the beauty of, of lure fishing in general really not just spinning for uh, perch on the canal but uh, pike, zander, anything you name it that's the beauty of it, travelling light. Anyway, I'm almost at the spot where I'm going to make my first cast. It's a lovely day. It's a January day, although the temperature, air temperature, is into uh, double figures, just about. And the water temperature's on the increase as well, so I'm hoping to, uh, to catch a fish or two. <laughs> I'm ready to go, make my first cast, and there's my lure. It's a Mepsaglia number three spinner with a, a silver a spoon. And as you can see there, I've got a quick change swivel so that in the event I want to change the lure, I can do it just in seconds. I don't have to tie a new one on or put a new trace on or anything like that. Just uh, take one off and then slip another one on. You need to do that sometimes when this one isn't working or maybe a boat comes through, puts a little bit more colour into the water for a while. All sorts of reasons, but the thing is I can do that if I want to. Now I've already done one spinning session uh, this year and I fished about an hour and a half for perch and I changed the lure halfway along. I walked to a stretch of canal then walked back. I changed it halfway along and as it happened this was the one that caught me my, uh, my good fish right at the very death. In fact it was the last cast and you can read all about that in the article. But that's the thing isn't it with fishing, we persevere, we don't give up because we're only one run, one float dip, one rod pull, whatever it might be from the fish of a lifetime. So let's see how today goes. The water's quite clear, I can actually see the spinner coming through it, so that's good because you don't want coloured water when you're spinning, you want something that the fish can see and that silver spinner is standing out, so uh, I'm hopeful, as you have to be, no good going fishing if you don't think you're going to catch. Mind you at the same time you have to be realistic. And I'm always realistic. That's why when I encounter blanks, it's just part of the uh, part of the process. But for now, I'm uh, I'm hopeful. I've made a few casts, I haven't had a fish yet, but I've just had my first follow through. It's actually quite exciting as you bring the uh, spinner in and you're just about to uh, lift it out, you'll see a perch come out of the, uh, out of the deeps and, and attack it. Sometimes and very often you'll, you'll get that fish right to the edge. It's almost like instinctively it feels that it's, uh, its meal is getting away from it, but often the other side of the coin, you don't, and I didn't on this occasion. And uh, it's a good tip when you spin in the canal to keep back a little bit so that your rod tip is over the end. Because if you're standing by the edge, then obviously I've got a six foot rod here, then that's out into the, uh, into the canal, isn't it? So it's best to stand back so that you're able to bring your lure right to the edge because a lot of fish that I catch perch on the canal are taken right down at my feet. Doesn't mean to say the fish was there in the first place, it, it probably picked it up 
from the cast door a few turns in but he followed it in and then he takes it right at the edge so that's encouraging anyway after the follow through I've just had a thud that's also quite common <clears throat> when you're spinning for perch a fish will come up and uh, hit the lure doesn't actually connect though so you feel the, uh, the thud of it that's, uh, that's exciting, not as exciting as catching a fish though and I've now moved up to um, the section on this particular stretch where I've, I've caught regularly before on the spinner so although the perch don't sit in one swim because they will move around of course um, I'm open now particularly because I'm in a, I'm in a section on the stretch where I've, uh, I've caught regularly before just need to get that perch. Still watching the spinner coming through. And if you do uh, take up spinning for perch, so it's a brilliant way of fishing for them. Get the right sort of gear. I've got a graze uh, rod and a small spro reel. And it's very, very balanced. And you, you feel everything. You feel every single perch that, that thuds at the lure as it comes through. And when you get one on, it's uh, it's great because it's not. This isn't pike gear that I'm fishing with, and uh, making do. This is um, designed really for fish like perch, small predators like that. So it's brilliant. And I think the Meps Aglier is uh, is a fantastic spinner. And of course, there are many different uh, different types as well in the Meps range, and I do fish with several. But I do find myself time and time again just coming back to the basic aglia. Can't beat it. As I'm going to show you soon. I've had another couple of follow throughs but no fish so I've decided to change my lure. As you can see there that's a standout one isn't it. It's uh, still a size 3 Meps aglia but it's the fluoro. So let's see if that does the trick. And I've just caught my first fish and there it is. It's a small chub. Not the perch I'm after, but at least I'm not a blanker. And I caught it back on the original spinner, the Meps Aglia 3 Silver Spoon. So I feel like a football manager that's made a successful substitution. Couple of casts into a fish. Brilliant. Let's see if I can get a perch. Back where I started, walking along the canal, except this time of course I'm going back to the car. It's quite dark now, I've had to put the light on the camcorder. All the boxes were ticked today in terms of conditions, and yet I just had that chub. I suppose it's only an hour or so up to dark, but I was expecting to catch more than that. But it got me thinking about the times when we go fishing and uh, we think it's going to be a real struggle. Last couple of winters we don't need any reminding that we've had some uh, really harsh weather. One particular time I was fishing a small river, a brook really, for roach and the air temperature was minus 20 and I actually caught some good fish. On another occasion I was on the middle seven and the water temperature was plummeting, dropping off really sharply because of the conditions and I had chub, really good chub, when the temperature was 1.6 Celsius. So it just goes to show, doesn't it, that sometimes we think it's not worth going, and it definitely is. Other times we think we're going to have a great day, and we don't necessarily. And to me, that's the mystery of angling. That's a great thing about fishing. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Tight lines.